Well, hello, it's Friday, and this is our weekly video, but this week we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I've had a lot of calls and I've gotten a lot of emails in the last 10 or 12 months uh, from people that are looking online, looking at live auctioneers, and a couple of people have even argued with me because there are auctions that have been turning up that are uh, supposedly the uh, consigned by the descendants of famous Chinese generals. And, I, and some of you may have noticed them, some of you may not have, but I want to go through it because it has to do with an increasing trend um, to fabricate provenance more than ever before to try to sell Chinese fakes. And it has become an absolute epidemic of absurdity. And the problem is, is that, is that no states in the United States enforce any laws about this stuff. Uh, the, you know, the state of Massachusetts, sir, doesn't. If it's an online sale, you know, they're not going after empire auctions. Um, the state of Georgia apparently doesn't care. Um, it, well, they don't care at all about what happens in Georgia, apparently, with their auctions, because we've got, th as you all know, we talked about three or four auction houses down there that routinely misrepresent stuff and are now routinely, uh, 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 it appears fabricating provenance it's happening in florida and so forth and the the, the reason it's so powerful is that uh, uh unfortunately a lot of folks that buy the major buyers of these things are all in china and um uh in china the 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 the, the, the collectors over there are very earnest and um, um and they believe that if they look at an auction in china they should be very suspicious especially of, uh, for Chinese paintings and porcelain that are supposedly um, authentic and is even more suspicious if it comes from a famous collection. They, they get very nervous. But for some reason, people in Asia think that if these kinds of auctions are being advertised in the U.S., they'd be, they'd, the, the law enforcement would go after them. The United States attorneys generals in different states and all this, they'd never permit it. They'd never permit it. They believe that there's much more regulation than there is. And so they, they bid with confidence in these sales and end up getting absolutely ripped off. And, um, and people from Europe bid in these sales often thinking the same thing. Um, the, the simple truth of the matter is, is that not one state in the United States that I'm aware of goes after anyone for selling fakes or faking provenance or making up, um, uh, uh, you know, age or any of it. They don't go after them for any of it. The only things they go after in America is if you're selling uh, endangered species products, things like that, if ivory, uh, rhinoceros horn, you know, king, you know, uh, 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 certain types of feathers, eagle feathers, that kind of thing. They will, they'll throw you, they'll throw away the key for that. But when it comes to, if you put a sale up and you come up with some uh, fake provenance and tell a tall tale, they're not going to do anything about it from what I've seen. And the fact is, is that it still goes on and it goes on all the time um, indicates how little they do about it. And we're going to talk about uh, a couple of auctions today. And I'm not picking on them, but we're going to, we are going to talk about Eden because they are one of the most flagrant um, 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 uh, uh, purveyors of fakes in the Asian art market. And I'm um, just going to say it. That's my opinion. Um, they sell rubbish. And people in China uh, evidently are buying the stuff and paying s some fairly serious money for it. And of course, once the stuff gets there, you can't get your money back. That's the other thing they think. They think, well, if they buy something and it's not right, they can return it to the American auction house. No, you can't. No, you can't. If it was bought with a credit card, as long as uh, uh, the terms of the card say, terms of the purchase, they, we're not responsible for anything that we tell you, um, they're not responsible. And unless you're willing to bring a massive lawsuit, you're not going to get anywhere with it. But we're going to go through some things that might help you fend off some of this nonsense that goes on. All right, here, for example, this is supposed to be a collection. This is an auction that just took place there, two parts. Uh, the general, uh, the collection of General He Zhao Zhu. Now, General He Zhao Zhu um, uh, was a Chinese general, he, but he went bankrupt and left. He left China in 1949. He, he, re, he, he resigned from the military and um, uh, moved to uh, Hong Kong, where he went bankrupt. He lost all his money, and he had to go to South America to find work. And he ended up working in some capacity at a plantation down there. And later in life, he moved to New York City, where he died. He was not a collector that anyone ever has ever heard of. Uh, none of it. And here you have a painting that's supposed to be by Zhang Da Quan. All right. Now, 
Um, uh, uh, Zhang Dao Kuan uh, uh, painted this in 1979, um, uh, uh, about a year before um, uh, General He Xiaozhu died. Gen the general died in 1980. So, the, 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 does this even make sense? No, it doesn't make sense um, because uh, Zhang Dao Kuan wasn't wasn't selling stuff to uh, nearly dead Chinese generals in New York City. Um, who probably had very limited funds. The issue at hand is is that paintings like this you can't sell in China without some story behind them because you need something to talk people into it. Because the way these are done, they are extremely easy to reproduce, unbelievably easy to reproduce actually. Um, and they've, and they've been reproducing them for years. They put old backs on them. They make them look old. And, you, and if you look at this, the first thing you know is that the mat is practically new. Uh, but uh, uh, the whole story is just absolute rubbish. Here's the, here's the figure um, and so forth. And uh, you can get this painting done um, in, uh, well, there's a number of places in China where they do this kind of work. Dafan, they're known for mostly doing oil paintings, but they also, you can get watercolors done there. The, I, that 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 little town, that little city, it's not that little now, but it's pretty big, um, produces roughly 60% of new artworks produced in the entire world each year. I, you heard me right. 60% of the world's new art comes out of that one town on an annual basis and has for decades. Um, it's, it's, it's a dirty little secret. Um, they're famous for making copies of Van Gogh's and uh, um, uh, French Impressionists and all this stuff, but you can get anything reproduced there. And a painting like this you could have made in, um, in, 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 in that part of the world probably for around 50 to 100 bucks. All right, and here it is, sold for 27,000. All right, and then you have this one, a painting that was supposedly by, and this is again, General He Zhu Zhao, a uh, painting that was supposed to have been done by Emperor Huizong. Now, this was a Song Dynasty emperor. He was a painter. All oh, that's true. He was a painter. Uh, the problem is, is that this painting here is in this museum. It's, 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 it's in the Liaoning Provincial Museum in Shenyang. All right, there it is. That's the original, and here's the script that went with it. And what they did was here, was they, they did a pastiche of it, um, hold on, we got to get over to it. There it is. So they they've they've put in the um, uh, the, the the a couple of pages of script. Here it is, and then they added the uh, scene with the cranes. All right, and then what they did was they went back, and uh, you may recognize this painting. You may recognize that. That is one of the most famous um, uh, Chinese Song Dynasty paintings uh, extant that the emperor did. The emperor was a well-known painter. He was a very good painter. Um, and um, this, I think, is in the Palace Museum collection. Um, I, 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 they haven't been robbed of it, so I'm sure it's still there. It's a multi-million dollar painting. It's fabulous. All right. The only, the only one of the paintings attributed to that, that emperor that's been on the market at any time in any recent memory was a small fan painting. It was only sold as an attribution. And it was in poor condition. And it brought $30,000 uh, some time ago. All right, so, so that'll give you some idea. And here you have um, uh, two of his most notable works combined into one thing. He was also a renowned calligrapher. All right, so that's why you have all this calligraphy. And they somehow managed to peddle the whole load uh, allegedly for $11,000. And it supposedly belonged to this ne'er-do-well um, general who went broke and died in New York. All right, doesn't make any sense, does it? No, it doesn't make sense, it's crazy. And then you have this, another a painting that's supposed to be by Giuseppe Castiglione, or also known as Lang Xining. And uh, we all know who he was. He was the uh, French Jesuit that became a favorite of the court and painted for several emperors. And he ended up doing special commissions for Emperor Qinlung, to whom he was particularly close. And um, um, uh, the emperor loved the way he depicted horses. And we're going to get to another horse painting that he did in a minute that supposedly also was one of his that was offered. Uh, and this painting is taken from the, uh, from the long scroll of uh, the, the horses that he did that he was so famous for and uh, supposedly belonged to this general. That's what the, uh, they, they, they advertised it as with a three to $5,000 estimate. Now, keep in mind, this is a fairly small painting, which is much smaller than 
um, uh, anything that uh, he was particularly known for. But at any rate, it was two feet long and about six inches wide. Uh, and were it authentic, it would have sold probably for three to five million dollars. Um, didn't sell with a three to five thousand dollar estimate. All right, and here's the other one, the other painting by Lang Sheening that was also uh, supposedly belonged to um, one of these generals. I forget which one it is, uh, but the the uh, da, 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 let me see here. Um, the the problem with this painting is. When you when you pull it up, this this particular horse here uh, is is a very famous painting. Um, uh, in 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 the 1740s, uh, an outlying province in China sent ten. They were known as the Ten Steeds, and they were sent to Emperor Qinlong uh, in fealty and uh, uh, to show their reverence for him. And they were very beautiful horses, and they all had special names that were important to the emperor. And the emperor was so impressed, he hired. Um, he, he, well, he contracted with um, Lang Xining, Giuseppe Castiglione, to do the, this style portrait for all the horses, set of ten. And uh, they are in the national uh, collection. They haven't gone anywhere. They haven't been stolen. They didn't make duplicate. You know, he only made one set. And they were highly regarded uh, because he just felt the horses were so beautiful, which they are. And um, is a detail of it. And this is a copy. This is a blatant copy. And this this one belonged. This here it is. This is this supposedly also belonged to General He Zhuzhao. How lucky can a guy get to have several paintings by Lang Xining? And uh, there's some script and colophons that were supposed to be from it, and a portrait of the emperor. The whole thing. And uh, what did it bring? Seven thousand dollars. So some sucker. Um, I hate to say that. I hate to use that kind of word, but that's what it is. Uh, stepped up to the bat and got taken. All right, and then you mosey along over to some other sales as examples. Here is another set of paintings. We talked about this. This sale was from the Yu, Yu Bin Dong collection. And this was a sale that took place, I think they might have done a couple that were supposedly from this guy. Um, um, uh, if you Google General Yu Bin Dong, um, even though they did a video for it and they, they had a guy that claimed he was the grandson and all this other stuff talking about it, um, he was supposedly a general that worked for General Chiang Kai-shek. But if you Google that name, Yu Bin Dong, the only reference you find to him really is in connection to this auction because they do such an efficient job of advertising it all over the internet. Um, it's all that shows up. But there's no, though, no, you know, there's a, chi there's a, a site out there that's run in Germany. Uh, it's generals.dk or something. And they have a list of all the Chinese and Taiwanese generals, all the generals. It's a list of generals in the world of history. Um, this guy isn't in there. But um, they had this fellow come along who appeared to be in his mid 40s and claimed that he was in Taiwan visiting his grandfather in the early 70s. Um, and playing around his house and meeting all these celebrities and, and um, um, the, the, the Chiang Kai-shek's son who became the, the, the leader of Taiwan after Chiang Kai-shek died in 1975 was a good friend and all this other stuff and he collected all these paintings that they knew nothing about until he died and then all of a sudden they found all these and this is supposed to be a painting by Lang, a series of paintings, of fan paintings by Lang Xining. And these are, uh, we talked about them last year, these are just repros. They're not even good repros. They're very poor repros. So it gives me some doubt as to uh, whether or not this number is, is true or they, did they just run the number up hoping somebody would hit it for a legitimate bid at the end and then um, uh, so forth. Because keep in mind, if they, if they ran this up on their own site and uh, it isn't, it isn't uh, a bid coming from the internet, you notice competing bid. It doesn't say internet bid competing bid. So that's a bid that's been issued from the floor at the house. Um, if it if it doesn't sell, there's no commission paid. So it's not like they have to shell out thousands of dollars in commissions to pretend they sold this if it didn't sell. But if they did sell, somebody got taken for almost 1.2 million. And uh, this was another one that I wanted to share that came up in a sale uh, that was supposed to be by, um, is this also by Yu Bin Dong again? But this was an earlier sale that was supposedly from this general's collection that nobody's ever heard of um, that didn't sell. And it's a, 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 a purportedly by Pu Ru and Zhang Bu Zhao, by Zhang Bo Zhu. And uh, Pu Ru was a famous artist. And um, um, uh, Zhang Bo Zhu was a, was a famous calligrapher. And if this thing actually were on the market, it would have 
you know, three to five hundred thousand pretty easily, I would think. And then we get over to this um, another another uh, painting that's supposed to be. And, and the other thing you want to do too is when you see these, look up the history of the artists and look up the history that they're claiming for the guy, and do a little rational thinking here. All right, here's a painting that's supposed to be by Yu Bei Hong, and Yu Bei Hong, if you don't know um, who he is, he was the most important painter of the 20th century in China. Um, period. Uh, there's a museum for him. Um, um, he was so impactful for how uh, the Chinese viewed art, how they adopted Western techniques and painting styles. He was a teacher. He lived in France. He studied classical realism, uh, uh, just a tremendous talent. Went back to China, was appointed by the government to teach, and was uh, you know very, very widely regarded in his lifetime. And here you have a painting that allegedly is dated 1926 of some horses. Now, the problem is, is that at this time he was supposed to, he was in France. He was not painting in this style at all. He did one, one painting um, to, to get an award uh, around 1918 um, that was donated to a school down there, a university. It's in the collection to this day of a couple of horses under a pine tree. So I think this is a pastiche of that, a copy that somebody whipped up to make it look like that. But at this time, he, he, this wasn't his work. This wasn't what he was doing at all. And uh, the painting, um, they, they said, sold for $1.8 million. All right, my, my personal feeling is, is that nobody paid for this painting, but they ran it up hoping somebody would jump in at the last minute. All right, and here we have uh, another painting that's supposedly by Li Kushan. Now, Li Kushan was another famous uh, 20th century painter. He died, I think he died, when did he die? 1983, yeah, 83. Um, and his paintings bring a lot of money. And um, uh, in the last year or two, uh, uh, this auction house has had several paintings by him, <laughs> quite miraculously. And this one uh, allegedly belonged to um, General He Zhu Zhao, um, uh, who bought, must have bought it like, uh, 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 you know, uh, very shortly before he died, because it was dated 1977. And as far as I know, Li Kuchan didn't have any customers really in the United States. He was a, he was he was painting in Asia. Uh, but at any rate, um, if it were if it were by the artist, though, also keep in mind the the price of this would have been up in the eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollar range pretty easily. And uh, this is something I'm throwing in just for the fun of it. This is we're going to talk about Charlotte's down in Florida. Um, you may remember a few months ago or a month or two ago, um, Eden had. Um, an identical vase to this, one of these great big uh, copies of those Chin Lung vases, similar to the one that sold at Skinner's a couple of years ago for $25 million. And here's one that's you know twice as big, 88 centimeters tall, so almost three feet tall. Um, the one that Eden sold for, allegedly sold for 110,000, though this one looks just like it. So I'm wondering if maybe it didn't get paid for and it got sent down to Charlotte's. But uh, we're gonna talk about Charlotte's a little bit because of this. Um, they're claiming now, um, they, they didn't pull a Chinese general out of thin air. They went digging around and they pulled out Votek Cheidel. And Votek Cheidel was a sort of uh, interesting character. He was a Czechoslovakian guy who was in Europe and began, um, he was one of the early, early uh, uh, fans of 20th century Chinese paintings. 19, he was in the 20s and 30s. And uh, he was going to China and buying them, bringing them back, doing exhibitions and selling them. And he was pretty successful at it for quite a while. And um, you can find him. You can find him on the Internet. He was a known guy. And uh, here you have uh, uh, a whole bunch of paintings that are supposedly signed by uh, signed Ji Bai Shi. It doesn't say by Ji Bai Shi. They wisely don't say that. But uh, if you, if you uh, uh, hop over to Charlotte's and get the page to load quickly, here we go. The legendary master, Chi Bai Shi collection. Now, this is the same outfit that um, last year was selling the collection of C.T. Lu. Uh, you, you can't make this stuff up. And this is supposed to be the, the leftovers of, um, um, of, of this dealer. Um, he, he had very little left. He, he sold everything. He, he, this, this, um, this, this story is absolute poppycock. Um, and, and, but some of his things are actually getting bids. I mean, this allegedly has a bid of three thousand dollars already, but all of these are fakes, by uh, uh, copies of Chi Bai Shi work, and this is a, a fake of a Zhang Da Quan. That's a fake of a Zhang Da Quan, and you can buy these in China for under a hundred bucks a piece. You don't have to, you, you know, you, 
if you want to fake go over there and just buy it all right but there's that vase again and uh, if you skip along through it a little further you're going to come over to this a page full of chinese porcelains and these porcelains allegedly belong to you got it another chinese general all right and these are supposedly the, this is supposedly the porcelain collection let the, let the page load there we go of wang hui ching hui ching and uh, he died in 1953 and of course everybody knows what the problem is here is that this vase was made in the last within the last 20 years so it's highly improbable that he owned that vase but um, that's their story and they're sticking to it and uh, there's, there's there's a whole bunch of vases in here. Here's another one turquoise Chinlung period marked vase all blah 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 belonging to this emperor I mean to this uh, Chinese general Wang Wei Jing and um, uh, no uh, this is a brand new vase that vase is uh, contemporary and the story is poppycock all right and that sale to this sale hasn't sold yet this is coming up in 14 days and this auction house from what we can tell everything they sell is a copy except for maybe the occasional rose medallion dish and canton teacup uh, but uh, all of these pieces are fakes and um, let's hope they don't go anywhere and they get sold and then we come back and there's is a and the, later in the sale they have more paintings they're supposedly by chi by Shi, and they have this guy uh, here uh, uh, posing around uh, it's it's interesting that this place has a gray beard guy that poses as an art connoisseur and um, uh, so does uh, Eden isn't it? Eden have that character named Mel down there that uh, um, pretends he's an art dealer all right so there we are um, and I just wanted to go through that this isn't what we normally do on a Friday but um, if you see auctions out there and you see famous names or, or, or obscure but historic names tied to objects and collections and you know all this kind of thing step back red flags everywhere um, uh, uh, unless, unless you know I mean there there have been a, a few uh, descendants of famous Chinese families who have sold things obviously descendants of Puyi, this kind of thing and but they always go to Sotheby's or Christie's if, if, if that's or Bonham's or, or, or Doyle or Freeman or to John or these kinds of places they go to places where they're gonna get the most money if the stuff's legitimate they're not gonna go to an auction house in in uh, Georgia or Timbuk 12 somewhere or, or in the swamps of Florida to sell it they're gonna go to where the action is all right so you should immediately be suspicious don't think you've discovered something what you've discovered is you've discovered bait and you don't want to you don't want to get into it okay so that's it for the week thanks for for uh, watching subscribe if you haven't please leave a comment if you like these um, uh, and uh, stay tuned and we also did for the global member users we've uh, added an extra video over there this week on things um, hope you enjoy it and uh, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.